Hello friends and welcome back to Gastro Guru. My name is Dr. Nisak Patel. I am a gastroenterologist from SIDS Hospital, Surat, Gujarat. We are discussing how to approach a patient with vomiting. The basic aim of these videos are for the practicing doctors so that they can practice better, they can understand the concepts better and they can treat their patients well. These are also for the medical students and for the resident doctors. These videos can help you in your exams and also help you to learn the right thing from the beginning. गैस्ट्रो गुरु के साथ बढ़ाएं अपने पाचन स्वास्थ्य का अनुभव जहां विज्ञान और वास्तविक ज्ञान मिलते हैं ऑथेंटिक मेडिकल हेल्थ इंफॉर्मेशन गैस्ट्रो गुरु के संग सो इन द पार्ट वन वी डिस्कस व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट कॉजेज ऑफ वॉमिटिंग इट कैन बी डिवाइडेड इनटू फाइव पार्ट्स इट कैन बी आइदर गैस्ट्रिक रिलेटेड प्रॉब्लम इट कैन बी आइदर ब्रेन रिलेटेड दैट इज सी एन एस रिलेटेड इट कैन बी ई एन टी रिलेटेड it can be drugs or it can be special causes like migraine cyclical vomiting syndrome chronic nausea vomiting syndrome also we had a quick check on how to take a history of patients with vomiting in this video we will discuss a bit further that how to differentiate between the gi and extra gi causes from the basis of history so that we can narrow down the differential diagnosis so first of all we are coming to the mechanical obstruction so as the intestinal system so as we know the digestive system is divided into stomach intestine and the colon so there can be obstruction at the stomach level it can be either gastric outlet obstruction like peptic ulcer disease it can be because of tumor it can be because of chronic pancreatitis which is also known as groove pancreatitis so the duodenal groove is narrowed it is compressed by the head of pancreas because of recurrent attack of pancreatitis and it can cause gastric outlet obstruction it can be gastroparesis so in gastroparesis there is no mechanical obstruction at the d2 level but the stomach is not functioning well so the common causes of gastroparesis are uh, long standing diabetes it is usually seen after 10 15 years of uncontrolled diabetes it can be because of any surgery so if any gi surgery there is injury to vagus so any type of vagotomy can cause gastroparesis it can be because of any post viral infections and in 40 to 60% of the cases it can be idiopathic in which no causes can be found so the typical uh, vomiting that we see in a case of gastroparesis is a retention type of vomiting so what is retention type of vomiting the stomach is a bag we all know that so when the patient will keep on eating the food will get retained in the stomach and it will come out at once So the typical history that the patient gives, for example, a diabetic patient who has uncontrolled diabetes since last many years, what history will give? Okay, subah to bhook lagti hai. Main khana kha leta hu. So they will have a good breakfast. They will have a good lunch. They might complain of early satiety. Okay, pet thoda khane ke baad bari ho jata hai. And when there is the evening time or dinner time, they will not be able to eat. They will feel bloated, and they will puke out. In the वॉमिटिंग वॉट दे विल से के सर जो सुबह खाना खाया था वो दोपहर को या रात को बाहर निकलता है सो दिस इज द क्लासिकल हिस्ट्री दैट दीज पेशेंट्स गिव सो अनडाइजेस्टेड फूड इज कमिंग आउट और पार्शली डाइजेस्टेड फूड इज कमिंग आउट बाइल इज यूजली एबसेंट एंड देर इज अ पोस्ट पेरेंडियल हैवीनेस एंड सर्टाइटी एंड बिकॉज दे कैन नॉट ईट वेरी वेल देर इज अ सिग्निफिकेंट वेट लॉस सो दिस इज द हिस्ट्री ऑफ गैस्ट्रोपरसिस पेशेंट इट इज यूजली क्रॉनिक इट इज इट डजेंट कॉज एनी एक्यूट वॉमिटिंग acute vomiting because of stomach related cause the most common is uh, gastritis uh, now coming to small bowel causes so small bowel causes as we can see it can be in either infection some sort of enteritis it can be drug related may, most commonly are painkillers it can be eosinophilic it can be some sort of internal hernia this is rare or it can be adhesion so always has history of any surgery in the past so a patient who is having any surgery in the past for example appendicectomy and now coming you with pain abdomen which is colicky distension and bilious type of vomiting that is when you can think that this might be a uh, subacute or acute intestinal obstruction there can be chronic reasons like crohn's disease uh, it can be a tuberculosis or it can be a neoplasia neoplasia in small intestines are very rare Crohn's disease the patient will give a history of recurrent abdominal pain weight loss anemia there might be a low albumin levels so these are the uh, history in which the patients of crohn's disease behave there there might be also extra intestinal manifestation like arthritis oral ulcers scleritis epistleritis etc 
so uh, the typical uh, the history that they give is a bilious type of vomiting which is green in color initially it may not be the cause but later on as the obstruction progresses the vomiting is usually bilious uh, there is a colicky pain the pain character is that it lasts for around 5 to 10 minutes and there is a gap of 15 20 or 30 or 45 minutes and then the, again the pain will start so the pain will be in waves uh distension may uh, is usually present but it may be absent when the obstruction is higher up so if the obstruction is just uh, beyond uh, duodenum or in the proximal jejunum there might not be distension of abdomen there is tenderness usually in the periumbilical area the patient is unable to pass stool and flatus so if a patient is coming with uh, acute or subacute small bowel obstruction think of these causes so the upper ones are the acute ones and the lower ones are the chronic ones uh, for colon to get obstructed it is very unlikely because the diameter of colon is very large however in cases of acute colonic diverticulitis or in chronic patients like colonic neoplasia so in this patient again the patient will have history of anemia weight loss abdominal distension this is usually gradual in onset while acute diverticulitis of colon is chronic uh, is acute in onset the patient will initially have distension and obstipation the patient might have altered bowel habits and gradually there will be vomiting which will be initially bilious and there will be then there will be a feculent vomiting so patient will give a typical history that something very odd is coming out from the vomiting it is very smelly so this is where you can uh, think of feculent vomiting it is also seen in cases of gastrocolic fistula so when the colon and the gastric is connected by a fistula because of any reason for example in acute necrotizing pancreatitis then the patient will give a history of feculent vomiting like feces are coming out through the uh, vomitus now coming back to uh, now coming to acute cholecystitis and acute pancreatitis how to differentiate between these two so as we know that the liver is on the right side and below there is a gallbladder so when there is an inflammation in the gallbladder it is known as an acute cholecystitis so the pain of location will be usual in the right upper quadrant but sometimes it can be epigastric as well the radiation of the pain will be on the uh, right side or till the scapula it will not go till the uh, lumbar spine so uh, this is a type of pain and how the pain will be so it will be a sharp stabbing type of pain so it will be very sharp shooting pain Uh, there will be tenderness in the area of right upper quadrant which is known as murphy's sign the pain usually persists for several hours uh, we need to differentiate between acute cholecystitis and a biliary colic biliary colic when the stone is hitting onto the neck of the gallbladder so it will cause pain uh, and this pain usually uh, will be short lasting in nature around 30 minutes 1 hour or 2 hour usually in the textbook it has been written that it is less than 6 hours so pain which is typical of the biliary colic but lasting for more than 6 hours with vomiting fever etc and a tenderness in the right upper quadrant is acute cholecystitis in which emergency surgery is required so if within 24 hours the patient is coming to you if you are able to diagnose this then you should refer this patient to a surgeon and immediate laparoscopic or open cholecystectomy is indicated Uh, amylase lipases are usually normal but it can be high so we can we must not confuse that amylase lipases are high so it is always acute pancreatitis it is not like that while in uh, pancreatitis the pain is usually in the upper abdomen it is vague uh, not very well localized so patient will say ke sir yahan pe dard ho raha hai while uh, in acute cholecystitis the patient will usually point toward the right hand side because it is a sharp uh, sharp kind of pain it radiates to the back so it will just cover the lumbar spine it will not be uh, limited to the scapula or on the right side of the chest so it will go to the back it is a boring kind of pain now many medical students have a confusion that boring is a dull kind of pain but no acute pancreatitis pain is very severe the patient is tossing on the bed and boring means like bore well so as as if you are boring a well into the earth uh, core similarly the pain will bore from the epigastrium to the lumbar spine so there will be a continuous boring kind of pain uh, there will be obviously a tenderness in the uh, upper part of the abdomen the patient will either assume fetal position or the patient will be tossing on the bed amylase lipases are usually very high so this is how you can differentiate between acute cholecystitis and pancreatitis now clinically why this is important this is important because in a case of acute pancreatitis you must not go straight away with a 
policy checktomy so when whenever there is a doubt confirm it with an ultrasound or if required a ct upper abdomen and if there is inflammation around the pancreas then hold the surgery for a while let the pancreatitis settle and then only surgery is indicated while if there is only problem in the gall bladder and for acute cholecystitis always make sure that the cbd is clear so cbd is clear we can be uh, very sure if the lft is normal plus ultrasound is showing that the lower end of cbd till lower end it is normal there is no dilatation of cbd there is no dilatation of intrahepatic biliary bile ducts if uh, still there is doubt we can go for an mrcp or an endoscopic ultrasound so first we need to be very sure that the gall, uh, the bile duct is clear from the stones and then only you can operate a case of acute cholecystitis so for acute cholecystitis we need to rule out two things that there is no associated pancreatitis and there is no stones in the bile duct now coming to mesenteric ischemia it is a medical emergency pain is very sudden in onset and severe the patient again will be tossing on the bed initially it is diffuse but as the time goes by it can be localized usually in the periumbilical area the patient will have history like the patient will have a history of rheumatic heart disease the patient might have arrhythmia the patient might have dilated left atrium or a left ventricular aneurysm because of past mi the patient will be a smoker might be a smoker a uh, patient might be taking uh, oral contraceptive pills or there will be a history of hypercoagulable states in the past so if a such such a patient comes to your emergency department with sudden severe abdominal pain which is diffuse always think of mesenteric ischemia as one of the differential diagnosis pain is usually out of proportion to the physical examination findings so initially you might dismiss this patient as a functional pain or a patient with a panic attack because the abdomen is soft because the ischemia time of the intestine is around 3 to 4 hours so till then you might not have any physical findings in the abdomen so initially it can be normal but however when the time goes by there will be abdominal tenderness guarding and rigidity and uh, the further it goes it can be tachycardia hypotension and signs of systemic instability uh, initially wbc can be normal but later on it is high and lactate is also very high so when a classical case with severe abdominal pain high wbc high lactate levels and you cannot find anything on ultrasound urgently get a ct angiography done this might be a case of mesenteric ischemia now how to differentiate between gastric and duodenal ulcers many of the medical students try to mug this up but it is very simple let me explain you how so when there is an ulcer in the stomach so just imagine that there is an ulcer in your hand so when anything will touch when the food will touch it will cause pain so gastric ulcer they usually have pain shortly after eating also it will worsen after eating and it will lead to cetophobia so when the patient is eating less obviously there will be weight loss also when the stomach lining is getting irritated there will be more nausea and vomiting so these are the possible things so pain is usually after eating worsening after eating which will lead to avoidance of food there will be more nausea and vomiting there will be weight loss Uh, while in duodenum because when the food will reach in duodenum that is after 3 to 4 hours so the pain will be after 2 2 3 or 4 hours or when the patient is in fasting so when there is no food in the stomach the acid will trickle down into the duodenum and because of the acidic irritation of the duodenum it will cause pain the classical nocturnal pain is sometimes not seen commonly the common thing that we need to understand by common sense is any a patient who is fasting for more than 6 hours so that is the time when the stomach will be emptying uh, empty and there will be lot of acid in the stomach and this acid can uh, irritate the duodenum so commonly what we see is the, those who are it professionals uh, going to college so they will have breakfast at around 9 am and then they will have lunch at around 2 or 3 pm so many of these patients will complain pain at 12 pm or 1 pm in the afternoon not in the night so any patient who is complaining of a fasting pain and it is getting relieved by food then always think of a duodenal ulcer as a differential diagnosis vomiting is less common because stomach is not irritated the duodenum is irritated and there will be insignificant weight loss because the patient will eat well in fact many of the patient when they will have pain they will eat and because of eating the pain will go away now there are certain very characteristic features in the history so if the patient is complaining of early vomiting or vomiting on empty stomach which many of the patient will say ke mujhe pit ka problem hai 
तो जैसे ही मैं सुबह उठता हूँ आई एम फीलिंग प्यूकिश एंड आई वॉमिटिंग तो दीज आर द कॉमन कॉजेज सो एनी हॉर्मोनल प्रॉब्लम लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन प्रेगनेंसी वी ऑल नो दैट अर्ली मॉर्निंग वॉमिटिंग इज कॉमन इन प्रेगनेंसी एनी टाइप ऑफ टॉक्सिन लाइक अल्कोहल और ड्रग इंड्यूस वॉमिटिंग दे विल हैव अर्ली वॉमिटिंग प्रॉब्लम्स मेटाबॉलिक एंड हॉर्मोनल प्रॉब्लम्स दैट इज इन अर्ली डायबिटीज और यूरेमिया फंक्शनल वॉमिटिंग सो दो पेशेंट हुआ हैविंग सम साइकोजेनिक अंडरलाइंग कोमोबिलिटीज लाइक एंगजाइटी डिप्रेशन और क्रॉनिक नॉजिया वॉमिटिंग सिंड्रोम दे विल हैव अर्ली वॉमिटिंग द पेशेंट विल कैरेक्टरिस्टिक कि जब मैं टंग क्लीन करता हूँ तब मुझे बहुत वॉमिटिंग होती है ब्रश मैं ब्रश डाल के उंगली डाल के वॉमिटिंग करता हूँ दिस इज द हिस्ट्री दैट दे गिव एनी पेशेंट हुई इज हैविंग सम एलर्जिक प्रॉब्लम और एक्सेसिव पोस्ट नेजल ड्रिप दे कैन हैव अर्ली मॉर्निंग वॉमिटिंग वॉमिटिंग दैट डेवलप्स अब्रप्टली विदाउट नॉजिया विच इज ऑल्सो नॉन एज अ प्रोजेक्टल वॉमिटिंग सो पेशेंट इज जस्ट सीटिंग एंड ही वॉमिट्स आउट विदाउट एनी प्रिसीडिंग नॉजिया सो ऑलवेज थिंक ऑफ सम इंट्रा सेरिब्रल कॉज लाइक ट्यूमर और एप्सेस और एनी साइंस ऑफ रेस आई सी पी यू मस्ट नीड टू रूल रूल इट आउट सो फ्यूकुलेंट ऑर्डर और वेरी बैड स्मेलिंग वॉमिटिंग सो एज वी सॉ इट कैन बी आईदर इन डिजिटल इंटेस्टिनल और कोलॉनिक ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन इट कैन बी समटाइम्स बिकॉज ऑफ लॉन्ग स्टैंडिंग गैस्ट्रिक आउडेड ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन लाइक इन केसेज ऑफ डायबिटीज और इट कैन बी अ गैस्ट्रोकोलिक फिशुला विच इज कॉमनली सीन इन पेशेंट्स ऑफ एक्यूट नेक्रोडाइजिंग पैंकेटाइटिस अदर पॉइंट दैट गैस्ट्रोपेरासिस एज वी सॉ इट विल कॉज अ रिटेंशन टाइप ऑफ वॉमिटिंग बिलियस वॉमिटिंग इट इज सीन इन इंटेस्टिनल केसेज सो एनी कॉजेज विच इज बिलो द लेवल ऑफ डी टू सो फ्रॉम देयर द बाइल विल कम आउट इन द वॉमिटिंग एंड इमीडिएट पोस्ट मील्स वॉमिटिंग द पेशेंट इज सेंग जैसे ही मैं खाता हूँ तुरंत बाहर आ जाता है सो ऑलवेज थिंग ऑफ देर इज सम प्रॉब्लम इन द थ्रोट और सम प्रॉब्लम इन द इसोफेगस और सम प्रॉब्लम इन द ब्रेन इसोफेगस में क्या हो सकता है इट कैन बी अ ट्यूमर or it can be ecclesia cardia so the uh, food is uh, getting stuck at the level of mid or lower end of esophagus and it is coming out so always ask history of dysphagia and weight loss in such patients also any problem in the brain can cause also a similar type of uh, vomiting it can be sometimes metabolic or functional as well so to summarize our video 1 and 2 we need to differentiate always vomiting from nausea retching and reflux uh, for the causes think of five major causes so it can be either abdominal causes or extra abdominal causes for abdominal causes no need to mug it up just close your eyes and see what are the organs that we see so here is the liver then the gallbladder then the bile duct uh, then the pancreas then the esophagus the stomach duodenum intestines colon appendix kidneys uh, urinary bladder and pelvic organs so these are the organs in which you can think of whether there is an inflammation or not which is causing such problems so acute pancreatitis acute appendicitis acute cholecystitis acute gastritis duodenal ulcer gastric ulcer so you can have a list of multiple causes at your fingertips without mugging it up also then think of drugs so which are the drugs which we commonly use and just try to correlate it with the causes then cns causes then ent causes so vertigo benign positional vertigo otitis media labyrinthitis etc then there are special causes like migraine vertiginous migraine uh, cyclical vomiting syndrome uh, vomiting because of overuse of cannabis these are the other rare causes but uh, in practice we see it quite often history is always the key for we need to differentiate between acute versus chronic versus episodic for any gi cause it is always important you club how the pain is there so if there is pain abdomen whether it is related to food or not and what is the type of vomiting so if you club all these three things the differential diagnosis becomes narrow and you can then select your investigations in a specific manner early morning vomiting we already saw post meals vomiting we already saw retention type of vomiting bilious vomiting projectile vomiting and feculent vomiting so these are the five to six different types of vomiting by which you can just think of yes this can be the different causes so that's all for now stay tuned for more videos uh, coming up next is how to investigate and treat the patients with acute vomiting chronic vomiting and episodic vomiting thank you gastro guru ke sath badhaye apne pachan swasthya ka anubhav jahan vigyan aur vastavik gyan milte hain authentic medical health information gastro guru ke sang 2021